I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, I spent the biggest part of my life thinking God was just mad at me, just ticked, and found out in my mid-40s that that was a religious lie that nobody needed to ever believe. I thank God that I have known and understood that that I can count on him like a trusted friend. That's the reason we do this podcast six days a week. I record five of these podcasts, and, and then I put my pastor's message on Sunday on this podcast for people to grow and be strengthened and and come to realize that God's a good God. He's not out to hurt anybody, but he wants to to, to see us come to him to love us and to care for us. Oh, I thank God for that. Now, I I, I want you to understand something. This podcast is, is put out in a lot of different avenues and a lot of different ways. Uh, we It's shared over all kinds of different platforms. But I want to ask you, I, I want to ask you to share these podcasts on your social media, if you if you uh, if you listen to this podcast, put it on your Facebook account, Instagram, whatever you whatever you whatever social media platform you use, share these. Help us get the word out that that the Lord's a good God, and He wants more than anything to be part of every person on this planet's life. He wants to love us and care for us and minister us minister to us through his word and and that's what that's what this podcast is all about to teach people and and help them to understand and to know that they can count on God's word as much as they can count on the word of a trusted friend more they can count on him more oh i thank god for that truth today share these podcasts on your social media I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us put this put this podcast on on the internet six days a week, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, to give his word away free of charge. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over every partner of this ministry. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now listen, I, I want to emphasize this. This podcast is free. It's been given to you free of charge. Now give it away. Encourage others to find out what God's Word says to them, for them, and about them. My prayers for every person that walks the face of this earth comes out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, it was Paul's prayer for the Ephesians that, that they are, their eyes would be open to the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God has for them. And that's my prayers for this world. Oh, I thank God for that desire for, for me to see the love and the mercy and the grace that he has given me that desire that he has given me, I thank, I thank God for that. And I thank God for the desire he has given me to see every person that walks the face of this earth know that love, that mercy, and that grace, and that goodness. And I thank God people are finding out that mercy and that grace and that love through this podcast, through these prayers, through the truth in God's word. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand. 
in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that He has opened my eyes to that love. And that is my earnest prayer for each and every person that walks this planet, that they would come to know that love. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Guide and touch my mouth. Touch my mind. Give me the the words to say and the scriptures and that to present to the people that are listening to this podcast. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in this podcast, all you're going to do in this podcast, and all that you have done. Guide and direct, Lord, in people's lives. Lord, I thank you for the people that are being set free through the truth in your word all over this world, through this podcast, through this ministry. Lord, guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, if if I could could say anything about what uh, we've been talking about this, this week, and it is persistence. Um, the Lord led me to look up the definition of, of persistence uh, earlier this morning, and you know it's it's a blessing when you when you when you have something in your heart, down in your heart, and you and the Lord gives it to you, and and you just see it come to fruition through through the days that you study at it and 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 see it and just see it flower but i i want to read the 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 definition that persistence uh or persist to persist uh the definition to per, uh for persist it says persisting especially in spite of opposition obstacles discouragement persevering uh, uh uh, lasting or enduring tenacity. Now, I, the, I, I wanted to read that because these people that we've been talking about this week have been persistent, <laughs> every one of them. And I'm going to talk to you about one today that was just, uh, he went out of his way to be persistent. He went out of his way to to find out and to do God's will. And that was Paul. You know, Paul wrote two-thirds, I guess, biggest part of the New Testament, not all of it, but uh, uh, I think I think he wrote 13 books of the New Testament. One of them's questionable, but I think that, that he he wrote uh he wrote it too. But 2 Timothy 4 and 7, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul kept the faith to do what? To finish his course. To be persistent. Paul was, oh, he went through a lot. 
He went through oh persecution and 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 that's that's what I really I really think that that uh, was his thorn in the flesh was persist or was for was uh, persecution, and he had to go through a lot of it. You see, Paul was a, a Hebrew. Uh, he he said I was a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee. He had been taught from a child to be a Pharisee, to 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 know the law, to know all about it, what was going on, how it worked, and and what he was supposed to do. And and then when 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 Christ came and really upset the powers that be, you know, Paul took it upon himself to get out here and just just go wild putting people in jail and and watching them being stoned he stood and watched Stephen be stoned and and and, uh, and I guess he encouraged it he endorsed it for sure but but Paul after he was he was changed he for he found a persistence that uh, I've desired to have my entire life, my entire Christian life anyway. I'm a very persistent person. I, I, if I see something that needs to be done, I, I do it with, with all my heart. I mean, I've, just, I've always been that way. If I want to see something done, if I want to do something, I do it with, with, with everything in me. I've always been that way. And I, I guess that's a God-given uh, blessing that 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 the Lord has instilled in me to see that that things get done. But Paul had a persistence, no matter what come against him, no matter what discouragement, no matter what anything uh, come that come against him. Uh, he he kept walking, kept walking forward. He kept doing what he knew God to do. You know, every morning I go through a certain schedule of devotions and 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 prayer time and and reading of the of the Word. Uh, I watch a couple of videos that I've watched for years, and and I was watching this one video today, and as I was. It was as I was closing my iPad, I caught the uh, uh, a glimpse of another video, and it said, "And it said, let not your heart be troubled." And it and Joyce Meyer was the one that was doing it. I didn't watch it, but but I watched Joyce Meyer quite a bit, and uh, you know she she grew up in a a very very bad situation as a child. But she she has just grown. Her ministry has grown into into a just a a soul winning station for people that to see their lives changed, and and she's persistent. She's been persistent over the years. Talks about all the years that she taught, and and only people about twenty five people came to her Bible study, and and you know that's persistent. That's being persistent. But Paul kept the faith to finish his course. I promise you, I promise you, he would not have finished his course unless he was keeping the faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Faith in God. I have found out over the years, looking back over my life, that he has watched after me regardless of my ignorance. Regardless of how much I, I just stood in unbelief, doubt and fear and unbelief in my life. But he's faithful and, and, and he loves us and he cares for us. So me being persistent and, and when I found out that I could count on his word, me being persistent in that, it's changed my life. It's changed the way I look at things. It's changed the way that that I I go about things. I don't go about things the way I used to. I used to 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 tear into something and haphazardly stagger through it and and if I messed up I'd back up and and readjust and go at it again and 
and and that ain't that ain't what God wants for us. He wants he wants us to be persistent in what faith in Him. I heard a story years ago, and it was talked about. I don't even remember uh, how the story went, but the gist of it was that what would you do? If, what would be the first thing that you done to uh, to chop down a tree? If you you had an axe and a, a a huge tree that needed to be chopped down, what would you do? And the man, the first thing the man said, he said, "I would sharpen my axe." And I that that hit hit home with me because when when I heard that story. I was just getting started, I guess I could say, believing God and believing His Word and getting in His Word. And, and it hit home with me that I needed to, to the more sharpen my faith, build my faith, strengthen my faith. And how would you do that? Before you ever took the first swing, before he ever took that first swing at that tree, to chop it down, he sharpened his axe and got it just as sharp as he could get it. Well, before I ever started uh, trying to be strong and trying to to be uh, what I should be in in my Christian walk, I began to uh, build my faith. And you say, well, how do you do that? How do you... How do you build your faith? I got in God's Word, not knowing much at all. I'd been a a minister, a God-called minister for my biggest part of my adult life, and I knew a lot of the Word. I, I had studied the Word over the years, but I hadn't put it into perspective in my life. I hadn't I hadn't believed it. But when I started diligently studying and and making it a point, when I read something, believing that something for myself, believing it, saying this is for me, this is God speaking to me, I began to, to, to build my faith. And through persistence over the years, I've seen my faith grow. And you know, like I've said it over and over on this podcast, the thing that, that worried me the most, the thing that bothered me the most, the, the biggest hindrance that I have in my life or that I had in my life was fear, fear of the unknown. That's, I guess that's the reason why I tore into things the way I did. I wanted to get it over with. I wanted to see the end of it. I wanted to see it, you know, got out of the way and, and taken care of. And and that fear today is gone. Gone. Why? Because I have built my faith in God. I have built my faith in the one that is capable of seeing me through no matter what comes along. I've told this the other here a week or two ago about what I told them at church. You know, I said it's it's a wonderful thing to look back over your life and be able to see see what God's uh, brought you through, and to look ahead and not knowing what's coming, but be able to stand in confidence that faith in God is going to carry you through. And what He's brought you through in the past, He will carry you through in the future. And uh, no matter what comes against me, God's got it. He's got it. Why? Because I have had faith in Him. I have been persistent in believing God's Word. Paul was that way. Paul was that way. Peter was that way. They failed. They fell short. But yet, what happened? They got up and kept on keeping on. Oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for all that He has shown me in His Word, strengthening me through the through His Word. You say, well, you know, that's well and good. That's you, but that's not me. I don't know which way to turn half the time. 
Well, I want to I make, make a suggestion today. Now, if you've never been born again, I want to invite you to be born again today. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Be born again today. Now, I want to ask you something today. Are you born again and just away from God? 1 John 1 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Let me back up. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to read that because I got that. Uh, I wound that up into Romans, and that ain't what the direction that the Lord wants me to go. 1 John 1 and 9. Now, this is to the church. This is to, to Christians. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. One of the, the, the biggest things that caused me to stay away from God was so, for so many years is that I didn't realize that that was talking to me. I didn't realize that if I confess my sins, that God would forgive me. Oh, it, it just wound me up when I come to understand that that was for me. And that's for you today. If you're away from God, confess your sins. Run to him. Don't run from him. Oh, like the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says in Luke 15, 11 through 24, it says when, when he came to himself, he went home. Go home today. And if, you, and, and if you've never been born again, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Confess him with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. I want to take just a second and thank all the partners. Partners, I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you've sown into this ministry. You help us make this possible. That what God has commissioned us to do, to give the love of Him, the love of God, away to the, to the world free of charge. And I want to thank you. Thank you for that. If, you, if, if, if you've tuned into this podcast and you've got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear what you've got to say. I want to give you scriptures that you can stand on according to that need. Send it to me. I want to agree with you according to God's word. Send those, those prayer requests in. If you've been born again, listen to this podcast, send me your, send me your testimony. I want to hear it. It thrills me to hear from people that's been set free by the truth in his word. Hey, and if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.